السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين In today's session we are going to talk about one of the most important topic with in regard to the relationship between parents and children and it's it will concentrate mainly on being dutiful to your parents so be good to your parents Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered uh, children to be uh, to be good to their parents from the very beginning and he mentioned that in all previous uh, religions this was one of the main important uh, topic and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 83. He said, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِيثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ لَا تَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهَ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and recall when we took the covenant from the children of Israel, enjoining upon them, do not worship except Allah. And to parents, do good. And to relatives, and the ayah goes on uh, continuing the list. So this is an order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the children to be good to their parents. And Islam uh, continued the good uh, uh, points, the good uh, manners that were in previous religions. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he revealed Surah Al-Isra uh, in Ayah 23, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرَ أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا وَاخْفِضْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ وَقُلْ رَبِّ ارْحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِي صَغِيرًا And your Lord has decreed that you not worship except him. And to parents, good treatment. Whether one or both of them reach old age while with you, Say not to them so much as oof. So the two, two three letters, the Hamza, the double fa, oof. And do not, do not, wala tenharhuma. And do not repel them, but speak to them a novel word. So these are two of the ayahs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about being good to, uh, to, to the parents. Also, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned the, how, how to be good in many narrations. In, uh, and we are going to uh, talk about several of them. So, 
Abu Huraira radiallahu an narrated that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Raghima anfu, thumma raghima anfu, thumma raghima anfu man adraka abawayhi inda al-kibar. Ahaduhuma aw kilayhima falam yadkhul al-janna. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, maybe, may he be disgraced. May he be disgraced. May he be disgraced. And he repeated that three times. Who? Who is Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say that to? Whose parents, one or both of them, attain old age during his lifetime. And he does not enter Jannah by rendering being dutiful to them. So let's now uh, go in details about being dutiful and being good to the parents. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked uh, or ordered, ordered us to be good to our parents. And he mentioned that in Surah Luqman, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Isra. In Surah Luqman, he says, وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا So, uh, just be good to your parents while they are alive, while they are in this dunya. So, be, just be good to them. Follow the way, the good way of how, how to keep good company with them. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also explained that, explained how we have to be good to them. And in Surah Al-Ankabut, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حُسْنَا So we advised man. We uh, wanted man to be good, to treat his parents good. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talked very well about being good to the parents. But Islam started this relationship way before the child was born. So Islam started the relationship when the parent, when the parents wants to get married. So he ordered, Islam ordered the, uh, the, the father or the husband to be a good, uh, to have a good choice of his wife. So in society, when, when someone wants to get married, what happens? The first thing they, uh, they look into is the uh, manners, the manners of uh, of the of the both the wife and the husband. So, what should that be? They should have the good manners, the best manners, and when. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered both the husband and the wife to choose. He, he gave them guidelines. So for the family of the, of the bride, they, uh, he said to them, إِذَا جَاءَكُمْ مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَخُلُقَهُ فَزَوِّجُوهُ So if, if someone propose to your daughter and he has good manners he has good religion good akhlaq then 
accept this proposal. So these are the, the main two fundamental basic things that should be uh, in the husband. Of course, there should be equality between the families. Uh, she should not be very, very, very rich and he is very poor. Life will not go easily between them and there might be problems. So there, there should be equality also social equality why would sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam specify these two issues the good manners and good religion because if someone has good manners then he knows how to honor his wife and if he has good religion if he if he follows the Sharia well, then he knows what he, his role is, what his duties are toward his wife. The same thing applies to the woman. When Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave her the choice to choose, he, told, he, he specified on these two things. So what happens when they when the groom wants to choose a good wife who will be the mother of his daughters of his sons of his children so he gave the following advice Sayyidina Abu Hurairah narrated qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tumkahu al-mar'atu li arba' li maliha wa li hasabiha wa li jamaliha وَلِدِينِهَا فَظْفَرْ بِذَاتِ الدِّينِ تَرِبَتْ يَدَعْكَ So Abu Huraira uh, reported that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said A woman may be married for four reasons For her property Wealth For her rank For her beauty For her religion So these are the four fundamental points that should be in the womb but if some of them are missing that's fine but the important one is religion so get the one who is religious and prosper so if she is not very wealthy that's fine if she is not the most beautiful, that's fine. If she is not of the high rank uh, 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 social person, that's fine. But she has to be religious. She has to be religious. Because when the society depends on the mother, this woman is going to be the mother of the children. And since Islam is, uh, in Islam, society is very important. And society starts with the smallest unit, which is the house. So if the house is uh, built upon, uh, the, uh, upon having a good father, a good, a good mother, then the house is sound. If the houses are sound, then the society is sound. So in both cases, the uh, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, advised both the man and the woman to choose the person with good religion, with good manners. Because when they do that, then the how the house would be a home would be uh, a place for following the islamic rules now the father chose a good wife the mother chose a good uh, a good husband now they are ready to build this community this small community the house 
Now they have children. When they raise their children, they raise them according to the Islamic Sharia. They raise them on good manners. They raise them on loving Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They raise them on loving uh, the Quran, on memorizing Quran, on reciting Quran, on understanding Quran. They raise them on having the best character traits. They raise them in a way that they would know, they would differentiate between what is good and what is bad. The parents care about their children and they care about providing the best they can for their children. But if their love is to the core, if they loved, loved their children the most, they don't only care about this dunya. They care about their children in akhirah also. They care about raising their children to be coolness of an eye to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that they will be in the high heavens on the day of judgment. They raise them properly according to the Islamic Sharia. And they are sure that these children are like plants. If you throw the uh, if you throw the uh, uh, the seeds, if you plant the seeds, then uh, you are uh, doing something for the future. So you plant good seeds so that when they bloom, when they give, then it will be what you planted. One time, a mom came to me and she said, my, my son is 18 years old and he does not pray. What should I do? He is not a good son. He is not. I looked at her and I said, do you know that these things that you want now in your son, you had to work on him when he was two years old. Where were you at that time? Why you did not pay attention to the to the to 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 planting the good seeds in your child in your child? So we should not wait until they are old and they turn out to be not good children. We have to start when they are very young. We have to direct them to the right path. We have to to be overwatching. We have to give advices here and there every now and then. And we have before that to be a good model. When they see, when your children see you standing up, praying on time, doing your namaz, doing, doing your fasting, doing your sadaqah, doing, being good Muslim, that will be engraved in their, in their heart and in their mind. So just be the good model and, and you, you will be planting the good seeds. Subhanallah. So now, we know how, what characteristics should be in the father, what characteristics should be in the mother, how they are good model for their children. Not only that, they have to see a good relationship between them, the parents, and their parents. So the child would always see how his parents are taking good care of his grandparents, how the parents are dutiful for their parents, for his grandfathers. Again, this is being a good model for the children. 
because one day one day those parents will be old enough and if the children do not have an idea how to be good to their parents when they get old then they might they might not be good 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 children do you know why why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded children many times in the quran to be good to their parents but there isn't an ayah in the quran that orders the parents to be good to their children to be dutiful to their children wow what what's the secret how it's out of the good nature it's out of the best in nature that the uh, the inclination of the father and the mother to sacrifice their life for their children to give them whatever they can whether whether uh, materially or whether uh, psychologically or whether in companionship so it's by nature of the parents to give by nature of the parents to continuously give it's by the nature of the parents to sacrifice for their children but we mentioned how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said uh, so be good be good to your parents while as i mentioned the nature of the parents is to give now if we ask how did Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam deal with the idea of being dutiful to uh, your parents? He mentioned, as, I, uh, as we said, uh, a lot of uh, narrations. In one of them, a man came to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he asked him for permission to go for jihad. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was going to fight the enemies in one of the uh, uh, battles. So when this man came to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and asked him for jihad to, uh, to give him permission to go with him, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at him and he said, Ahayyun walidak? Are your parents alive? He said, Naam. That man said, Yes. So he said, Fafihima Fajahid. Fafihima Fajahid. So strive for their sake. Be good for them. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked one time. Su'ila Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an ummin lam tahujj walaha walaha ibn afa yujzi'u an ummiha an tahujj anha? Qala, na'am. Law kana ala ummiha daynu faqadatu anha alam yakun yujzi'u anha fal fal tahujj an ummiha. So once Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked about a mother who had died without performing hajj. So he was asked, would it be good enough if her daughter was to perform hajj on her mom's behalf? And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said yes. If her mother owed a debt and she paid it off, 
so the daughter paid it off. Would that not be good enough? So, if someone, if the mom had borrowed some money from someone and the daughter knows about it and she paid it off, of course. So, would that be good enough? And they said, yeah. So he said, let her perform Hajj on behalf of her mother. So, this is one way of being good to your parents. Another, another question, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he received, عن ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما قال جاءت امرأة إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقالت أفأصوم عنها؟ قال أرأيت لو كان على أمك دين فقضيته أكان يؤدي ذلك عنها؟ قالت نعم قال فصومي عن أمك So the previous hadith we said we mentioned حج Would Allah سبحانه وتعالى accept حج Now in this hadith it's about fasting. So a woman came to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Messenger of Allah, Ya Rasulullah, my mother had died and there is due from her fast of vow. So she vowed that she would uh, fast, but she died before she, she, she would do it. She would fulfill her vow. Should I fast on her behalf? Thereupon uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you see if uh, that if your mother had died in debt, would you would it not have been paid on her behalf? She said yes. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, then observe fast on behalf of your mother. So do it. So perform hajj, perform umrah, pay the debt. Uh, fast on their behalf. Now, one, uh, one time, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, Ya Rasulullah, how, how should I be dutiful to my parents? So, a man came to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he asked him, Ya Rasulullah, ma haqqul walidayni ala waladihima? Ma haqqul al walidayni so this was a very important lesson to everyone because such questions when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam answers them they are not just for that person they are lessons for us so he said to him, Huma jannatuka wa naruk. So they are your paradise and they are your, your hellfire. What do you understand from this? That if you are good to your parents, they are your, your paradise. They are your, they are the leading people to your to, to be in paradise. And if you are bad to them, if you are not good to them, then you are going to hellfire. So let the, the one who is dutiful to his parents, do whatever, whatever he, he, uh, he, he does, he will not be in hellfire. 
and let the one who is bad to his parents do whatever he wants, he will not get into Jannah. So, huma jannatuka wa naruk. Be good to your parents. You know the story of the three people who were in the cave and the big, big rock fell on them and it closed the entrance of the cave. So there, there is no way that they would move it and they would get out. So each one of them said, let's ask Allah by the best action that we did and he accepted so that he will move this rock away. So the first one said what he said, uh, how he uh, how he was good in such and such uh, thing. This uh, and the rock was moved a little bit, but it was not enough for them to get out. The second one did the same thing. The third one, what was his issue? He said, "I used to take care of my old elder parents." And I used to milk the cow and stand before them so they would drink from that milk before I, I drink or before my family drink, before my wife drink, before my children drink. One time I came, I came in late and I found them sleeping. So I hold that milk and I waited for them until they woke up. Ya Allah, if you know that this, this action of mine is good, then move this rock. And, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moved the rock enough so that they could go away, get out of, the, of that cave. Now, you might say, well, it's important to be good. It's uh, the, the essence of life to be good to the parents, especially when they get older. Why? Because when the parents are older, they would need, they would have special needs that they, they don't want to, uh, to burden people with. And the only person who they will be comfortable with is their children. They might, they might need to, to, they are bedridden. So you have to take care of them and all what this word means. And you will be rewarded for that. They have to be clean all the time. They have to be, uh, uh, to have nice clothes all the time. They, this is very important for, for their health. And the one who, who is good to them is the child. So the child would do both health, wise. he's taking care of them, and also he is being nice to them, he's being good to them, he, he says nice words, he says good words, so they, they, they are pleased. So his words would make them happy. So when they say, may Allah be pleased with you, my son, then it will be from the deepest of their heart. Allah yurda alayk. And people and parents, older parents, they get so, uh, they, they become so light in their heart. They would appreciate all good things you are doing for them. And their, their words, their dua will be fluent, will be continuous. If you do something good to them, they will, they will make lots of dua for you. And with this birrul walidain, with this being dutiful to your to your parents, Allah will will make everything easy for you in your life. Sometimes a person would say, 
I took care of my parents, but they are dead now. Am I done? You say no. No, you are not done. You will not be done with being dutiful to your parents until you yourself die. The deceased is so much in need for the dua and the sadaqa. And what is that? The, the best dua and sadaqa would be from their children. Someone came to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said to him, Ya Rasulullah, am I a righteous person? Hal ana waladun salih? What was the answer? He said to him, If, if uh, the best thing that a parents would leave after the death is a righteous son, and of course, when I say son, son and daughter, a righteous son who waladun salihun yad'u who makes dua for them after they die. So are you making dua for your parents after they die? Are you asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for maghfira for them after they die? Are you asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for mercy for them after they die? Are you asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make their grave as, as uh, a garden of paradise after they die? Are you making lots of dua for them? Are you paying charity for them on their behalf? The best charity that you can pay for your parents is the charity of watering people, giving uh, water to people. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu said, إِذَا مَاتَ بْنُ آدَمْ إِنْقَطَعَ عَمَلُهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثِ So, if uh, a person if a person uh, passes away, uh, he is cut off everything in this dunya. He is cut off everything in this dunya except, except for three things. So, إذا مات ابن آدم انقطع عمله إلا من ثلاث when a man dies, his deeds come to an end. There is no more, more deeds to, to, to do, no more actions to do. But what are these three things? Sadaqa, Sadaqatu Jariya. So it's a ceaseless charity, Sadaqa Jariya. Aw ilmun yuntafa'u bih, a knowledge which, he is, which is beneficial. Or a virtuous descendant who pays for him, uh, who prays for this person who makes dua. So what are these things? Sadaqatun jariya. If you know that there is a mosque that is being built, just put some money. Put some money in that mosque. Donate. Because... It will be a sadaqa jari. Whoever prays in this mosque, you will get hasanat from even if, if even after you die. He learned uh, some some type of knowledge and he taught it to people. So people are using his knowledge. He has a child who prays for him. So this is our point. So if you want to know if you are a virtuous person, if you are a righteous person, then check. Are you making enough to have for your parents? One time, someone had a dream about his friend. He knows him. He knows his friend. And this friend passed away. In the dream, the deceased person was in the grave. 
And the one who saw the dream saw that there was uh, people passing by the graveyard. And of course, when you pass by a graveyard, you read Al-Fatiha for all the Muslims who are buried in this graveyard. So he saw that this Fatiha was being sprinkled on these deceased people as jewels. And all of those uh, 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 people who are dead, they would go and try to catch as many of these jewels as they can. They want to collect these jewels. Except for his friend, who would be sitting happily, smiling, looking at those people. He saw that dream several times. So he wanted to make sure what's going on. So he went to check to his family. And he, he learned that this friend of him who passed away had a very righteous son. Every now and then this person would read the whole khatam of Quran and, uh, and he always would make dua for his parents, he will, he, uh, for his father. He will always uh, pay charity. He will always read fatihas for him. So there were a lot of jewels that are being sent to this man. And when people who passed by the graveyard would read the Fatiha, and this Fatiha would be spread as jewels, he has, he has a lot. So he would leave these jewels for those who do not have children who are reciting Quran for them and who are sending them jewels. He was happy to learn that. After, after years, the same man had another dream about the same person, about his friend. But this second dream was different than the first dream. In this dream, when, peop when someone would pass by the graveyard and read Fatiha, and the this Fatiha is spread as jewels, his friend would go and collect the jewels with them. He was surprised and he went back and checked about his family and they told him that his son passed away. So you see the importance of being dutiful to your, to your parents even if to, after they pass away. So, when, when the, the parents get older, some, some children, they feel that overwhelmed of taking care of them. They feel that they don't have time to take care of their parents. They feel that their wives won't, won't accept to have the parents in, in their houses, so uh, uh, they will not welcome them. She would say, oh, they are uh, old, uh, they, they, need, they have a lot of special needs, we cannot take care of them. So what happens, they put them in nursing homes. And this hurts a lot. When the parents raise their children, they raise them so that when they get old, they have their children close to them to take care of them when they need the care. And it's really painful for, for, for the parents to be thrown in the nursing homes without their children. Instead, they take care of them. So they leave them to uh, any person to take care of their parents. They do not 
think of the future that one day they will be old as their parents and their children will also abandon them. So that's why in certain countries, nursing homes don't, don't exist. Because the children would try to give back a little bit of the sacrifice, of the love, of the uh, hard work that the parents did during their life. They, they like to, to pay them a little bit back to the efforts they, they made until these children got where they, they are. So, some of the very important duties that the children, or let's say it's more than a duty, it's a right for the parents to have from their children that they take care of them, they are dutiful to them, they try to please them, they always say nice words to them, they always take care of their affairs when they are not able to do that anymore. They would uh, be uh, uh, accepting in acceptance to their orders, to whatever they ask for. They would fulfill their needs and they would spend on them. When the parents are old enough, they don't have the money, then their children should be very generous to their parents. And whenever the children are good to their parents, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will highly reward, reward them for, uh, for whatever they are doing to help their parents. And of course, uh, we know that uh, being good to your parents will make your heart feel at ease. It will make you feel the closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you are helping people who are in need. So, where so many things uh that are very basic and very important. And as I mentioned, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Birru aba'akum tabarrukum abna'ukum. So be good to your parents so that your, parents, your children will be good to you when you get older. Now, you might say, okay, we heard a lot about all types of good things that we have to uh, to do for our parents. But is there something that is special? Is there something that is special and that will be highly rewarded for them? So what is, what is it that we have to do? And I say that the best thing, the best reward for your parents is to send as much salawat to do as much durood for Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad at least 100 in the morning, 100 times in the evening. Do you know why? So many reasons. And I'm going to say just a few of them. Dad. When you send salawat, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send his mercy and salawat to you. That's one thing. Then, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَقْرَبُكُمْ مِنِّي مَجْلِسًا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَكْثَرُكُمْ عَلَيَّ صَلَاةً So the, the closest of you to me on the day of judgment is the one who has the most of salawat who sends the more salawat to me in dunya but 
the one the one reason that I want to mention is that when you send salawat, when you say Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, then what happens? An angel takes this salah from you and take it directly to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to give it to him. And he will say, Ya Rasulullah, this person, the son of this person, sent you salawat. So what have you done? This angel is mentioning the name of your parent to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What an honor that the name of your father is mentioned to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is a very important and a very nice way to repay your parents with a little bit of what they have done for you in their life. So this was just a very short uh, talk about being dutiful to your parents. And if we want to go on, we can go on days talking about how good we have to be to our parents. And this embodies one of the best Muslim character trait that he should be having all his life. And with this, we come to the end of our meeting for today. Inshallah, until we meet next time, I send my salam and your salam to our beloved Prophet, Sayyidina Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.